ill. In the early 1900s, he became a consummate circus performer. He was soon making $500 a week. That was a lot of money when we consider $9 could buy a man's suit in those days. His act combined fact and fiction. He gave the audience what it wanted. trained himself as an expert gymnast, the audience was too mesmerized by the sight of him to fully appreciate his talent. So Lionel devised a story to explain his extraordinary appearance. It is a curious story, a sad story, how I got this way. Lionel claimed that while his mother was pregnant, she saw his father mauled by a lion in a circus. He maintained that his mother's fright at what the lion had done affected his birth and cursed him for life. The audience was more than willing to believe this strange tale. Now, of course, Lionel's story about his father wasn't true, but he had to make up something to conform to the popular Victorian belief that when a woman was pregnant, her baby could be permanently marked by a frightening experience. Uh, we all know that modern medical science doesn't support such an idea at all. But what caused Lionel's condition then? Probably a spontaneous change in his genes that affected both his hair and his teeth. Something like that happened to another incredible human oddity. Julia Pastrana was known as the ape woman. P.T. Barnum thought she was the ugliest woman he had ever seen. But she could speak three languages and could sing and dance with rare talent. Julia Pastrana was a Mexican Indian under contract to an American showman named Lent. From the moment he first saw her, he schemed of different ways to exploit his rare find. Julia was a sensation all over the United States and Canada. Scientists examined her. Some thought she belonged to a new species, but most agreed she was human and very much a woman. Lent, her manager, took her to England, to France, to Germany. And as her fame grew, Lent began to worry. He thought other showmen were trying to lure her away from him. Marriage offered a sure way for him to hold on to her. He proposed, and she accepted. He loves me for myself, for myself alone, she said on the morning of her wedding. In 1960, Lent and Julia arrived in Moscow to await the birth of their first child. Julia was happier than she had ever been. She had a husband, and now she was to have a child of her own, just like other people. Julia prayed the baby would be normal. But when the nurse held out her infant son, she saw a hairy, dark-skinned little creature that looked just like herself. 36 hours after its birth, the baby was dead. Brokenhearted, Julia died a few days later at the age of 28. Lent was desperate to preserve the source of his fortune. He went to Moscow University to see Professor Sokolov, an expert at mummification. Sokolov preserved the bodies of Julia and her son. 
Ladies and gentlemen! For 20 years, Lent traveled with the mummified remains of Julia and her son, exhibiting them and making money. She is Darwin's famous missing link! P.T. Barnum saw Lent's exhibition and was struck by a deep sympathy for the dead woman. He said, Poor Julia could not know an old friend was calling. She could not hear or see, feel joy or pain or want of love. And I thought how once she said, He loves me for myself alone. Most people called her a monster. I knew who the real monster was. In 1880, Lent went insane. He died soon afterwards in an asylum, completely mad. Other showmen bought the exhibit and continued to exploit Julia. 100 years later, the bodies of Julia and her son were still being exhibited. In 1972, they toured the United States. People saw them at fairs across the country. 1973, they were in Sweden and in Norway. Where they are today, no one knows. Perhaps the most appealing of all human oddities is the midget. Midgets and dwarfs have always fascinated us. In every part of the world, myths have sprung up about them. In Europe, dwarfs were creatures of magic and mystery, possessed of supernatural powers. They were called elves, goblins, pixies, brownies, leprechauns. Celebrated in many times and places, little people have been favorites of kings and queens. Jeffrey Hudson was only 18 inches tall, yet served as a diplomatic courier, killed a man in a duel, and had numerous love affairs. Count Borolaski made his living as a musician in the courts of Europe until he died in 1837 at the age of 98. Lia Graff, 27 inches tall, became famous when she was photographed with J.P. Morgan. Like so many other little people, Lia Graf was killed in Auschwitz in 1941. Mexican-born Lucia Zarate, the smallest woman who ever lived. Under 20 inches tall, she weighed only five pounds. Charles Stratton, known as Tom Thumb, was not only the smallest man who ever lived, but he was certainly the most famous. Some of his fame was due to his careful exploitation by the self-styled King of the Humbugs. P.T. Barnum. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. From the beginning, Barnum was destined to play a key role in the life of the most celebrated human oddity of all time, General Tom Thumb. Sprightly, perfectly symmetrical in all his proportions, and graceful beyond belief weighing just 15 pounds and standing 25 inches tall. Tom Thumb was born in 1838. His mother and father were completely normal in height, and so were his two older sisters. So was a brother who was born later. So was Tom at first, but when he was still an infant, he stopped growing. Two years later, the child was still only as high as your knee. In 1842, P.T. Barnum, visiting Bridgeport, met Tom, who was five years old. Barnum trained him to sing, to dance, to joke with an audience. A bond grew between the two, a bond that was to last over 40 years. Tom Thumb was an instant success. In city after city, he played to packed houses, and the dollars flowed in. He became a household word throughout the country. In 1844, Barnum, looking for...